Hey everyone, welcome to the second DC December. With me today is cosplayer Michael Burns and director of the movie Superman World War, Don Callahan. Howdy, howdy. How we do? Glad to be here. Now, with the announcement of David Corenswet being the next Man of Steel, I figure what better way to cap off for the 85th anniversary of Superman than to go back and take a look at these at the previous actors. So for this topic, it's going to be the top 12 Superman actors. Now for this list, there's going to be two subcategories, live action and voice actors. This way we can see all aspects of the characters' portrayals over the years. This list has covered actors that have taken on the role for a good while or based on the voting on said list. They have made quite an impression even if it's been a one-time thing. So for any recently new actors like Jack Quaid from My Adventures with Superman will not be included. And remember, this list is purely subjective and based on a collective of multiple fans. So please feel free to comment politely on any that could have been added. But with all that out of the way, let's begin with our number six voice actor. Metropolis is my turf. You all right, Miss Lane? I am now Superman. Nice outfit. I like that show. That was a good show. That had a lot of uh, realism. I say realism. It showed Superman come out unhinged when he put Brainiac in the swamp, made him see microorganisms. I live in a swamp, it's Louisiana. I, I felt that. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of critters in that little swamp out there. So I, when he said it, when I made it, when it drove him crazy, especially the cicadas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll make you nuts. <laughs> Man, yeah, just kind of like the whole thing. Just it, it, it's like almost irritating just to watch, let alone how that all went down. He was not showing Brainiac any, any mercy. No, not whatsoever. Yeah, I was, I was really uh, impressed. As far as animation, I mean, he definitely surprised me, almost out of all of the other actors. Because I mean, it's not that they didn't have realism but he had that distinct voice and especially in the brainiac battle he brought that no mercy to that whole vibe of how he was feeling and i think with a lot of the, some of the other animated actors they they do bring something to the table and i felt like matt bomber kind of brought a little bit of that edge that i think um we don't really get to see in a lot of other supermen agreed which is ironic because a lot of people felt like he could have taken on the role for any live action movies. It was a bit touch and go, I think, for early 2000s before Superman Returns. Was he supposed to be like the actual live actor? I think there was something, but although he did do a couple like of Japanese commercials as Superman, but fans did some fan art and thought that like, you know, he has the hair, he has like that kind of chin and they felt like, you know, he could probably do it. I mean, I personally think he probably just needs like at least maybe 10, 50 more pounds of muscle than, you know, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know what would have been different, you know, compared from, you know, bringing it around, but Mad Bomber could have done justice in live action. Yeah, but still, it's good that we got to have him for this one film, because what got me the most intrigued is how he doesn't go with the classic corny kind of style. Like, besides with Brainiac, I always laugh when he just turns the plane over and lets the, the guy fall just because he put a gun on Lois. And even just like how easy he was able to change his voice from being Clark to Superman. I mean, I know it's just with voiceovers, it could be different takes, but still it, there was a very noticeable difference how he was deeper as Superman, but then just felt like it was his normal register as Clark. So what's your excuse? Meaning? You volunteered to be their hostage? Well, better me than someone else. You have to stop doing things like that. Yeah, and I feel like that's a tricky thing too with a lot of actors that try to transition with the two characters, it's almost kind of like you, you kind of see, you, it's like you have to see it on a visual basis and it almost kind of messes you up in a little bit on the auditory side where if it, if it doesn't match up, then it almost makes it feel not believable that there are two separate people, kind of like Batman and Bruce Wayne in the same room, Walter. Oh yeah, as far as the, the animation, his voice projected that pretty well. He did a good job. He really did. Citizen, your behavior has become subversive. Subvert that. Thanks for watching, everybody. And be sure to tune in for tomorrow's episode, as we'll be going through the list one day at a time till Christmas Eve. In the meantime, check out last year's DC December playlist and other content on this channel, as more will come on DC December.